on get up the mountain get up to the mountain one of the things I've realized is that every one of us have a pattern everybody has a pattern where it's a family pattern where there is always a divorce there is always a sickness there is always some particular thing that happens to us. Yes, I was listening to a man of God who said that when his father was when he was young, his father was falsely accused of sleeping with a woman. And after nine months, the person came and the father had to run away. And after nine months, the person came back to confess that I'm sorry it was a lie. So when he too, as a man of God, this is Apostle Johnson Suleiman, I'm sure. There was also a lady who came in and said he has also slept with him. So he went to talk to his father. His father said, I did a mistake. I ran away. Don't run. But I can promise you, in my nine months' time, the lady will come and say it's a lie. Nine months, the lady came and said it's a lie. Now, you look at this. This is a man of God, anointed of God. So why should a parting continue with him? That will bring us to the place of seeing a man like Peter in the Bible, who by Genesis 49, there was a prophecy on Simon's family. Because of their anger, they went to kill innocent people by deception. And their father said that they will live and die by the sword. Peter walks with Jesus, not with me. He walks with Jesus three and a half years. At the end of the day, Jesus advises him. This guy, based on his name, Simon, takes a knife in the garden of Gethsemane and goes to cut somebody's ear. Now, at this stage, you, Brother Victor, you've made it worse. At this stage, you will note that proximity to the anointing, proximity to the presence of God is not enough until you have intentionally decided to change certain patterns concerning your life. But in all this, you could see that when Peter and next week Sunday, we are going to have a very wonderful time because next week Sunday is Pentecost. So I'm preparing all this thing from Easter towards this Pentecost because from the day of Jesus' death to the um, Pentecost is about 50 days. And when Jesus died and resurrected, he told them to wait in the upper room for 10 days. And when they waited in the upper room, actually there were 500 people, over 500 people who heard Jesus say, wait for me. But by the day of Pentecost, we only have 120. And one of them significantly was Peter. After waiting on God for 10 days, Peter came out as a unique person. Now, I want to tell you something with my introduction and say that the master way to break patterns is not just sowing seeds, but it's building an altar by going to your mountain. You see, I look through the Bible and you realize that any time people changed a life, they went to the mountain. If I say go to the mountain, I don't mean go and look for a mountain somewhere and go and stand there and say, God, I've come to a mountain. And I don't want to go into the seven mountains because actually operating within these seven mountains can break a, an area of a curse in your life. When God wanted to change a certain pattern that Moses had walked in, he had seen the fetishisms. He had seen, seen all the things of the Egyptians based on Acts chapter 7 verse 22. You will note that the Bible said Moses was learned in the book of the Egyptians, mighty in word and in deed. So he had even written certain books like what we call the Apocrypha. That today we don't allow it to be read in the Bible. They call the six and seven books of Moses. And some prophets are using it because it's more of a magical book. The fact that Moses wrote it, that doesn't mean that God asked him to write that's one thing I'll be getting into. Because a lot of the time, sometimes even we men of God, we say things 
when you have not personally gone to God to talk to God about it. So Moses wrote those, those books. By that time, he had not known God. So when he got to know God, God took him to the mountain. And at the mountain, God gave him specific instruction. Now, one of the things you need to do is to spend quality time with God to have an instruction to your life. Because I'll be proving to you that sometimes going into prayer alone and activating your um, seed or your altar you have built alone without understanding the premise on which or the reason why God is saying certain things can bring you into trouble. So in Exodus chapter 25 verse number 40, let's read it and let's go. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. Let's read it again. Be According to the word pattern I have, I didn't hear you. According to the pattern I have, I, I have this iPad and I gave it to one of my pastors to get me a cover. And he looked at it, went around, took a tape measure, measured it, and then he went on the net and ordered. When it came, it wasn't it. So we went into the phone and we saw the actual specification how it was made how it was manufactured and finally a cover came and it fits now sometimes people think that by we using our brain we are faster than the manufacturer we think that our wisdom is greater than the wisdom of god we think that our understanding of how we see things in the end of the day it puts us into a lot of trouble now if you look at moses God was specific. He said, I want to build you to build. If you read it, especially in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, God told Moses, I'm going to let you build a tabernacle that is in heaven. And you are going to build the same on earth. So that when you go there to pray, it will be like you are in heaven. Even though you are a human being. And you need to have a specific um, cloth wearing that you must wear. That will give you access there because in heaven, you cannot go to heaven with this physical body. You will die. So Moses, the Levite must wear white. Then the high priest must wear white under with blue on it, with red on it, with, uh, um, with stones here, six stones here, six stones here, which is carrying, like we call in church, carrying the heads of department on your shoulder. Or carrying all the 12 tribes on your shoulder. And then you must have the same stones also on your breastplate as a high priest. That's also like presenting them before God. So a priest or a, a pastor who doesn't carry people on their shoulder and present them before God, it is, is not working for God. <laughs> I don't want to get there now. Your, your ability to carry the people in, on your shoulder and on your breastplate it's important now so one day the act second samuel chapter six is going and one guy called uza he's a priest he's a priest but not a high priest they are transporting the ark the ark seems like it's about to fall okay so the church seems that it is collapsing it's like the body of christ there's something wrong let me correct it and god says who are you to correct my assignment die so sometimes you see people who see men of god erring and they think because they are Christians, they can talk. But you see, if you like it or not, the kingdom of God is a class society. I repeat it. The body of Christ is a class society. If you read the book of Jude chapter 1, I'm sure this is what it says Old Testament. The Bible made a reference to how Michael, the archangel, wanted to deal with Lucifer. And did not tell Lucifer, I rebuke you. He said, the Lord rebuke you. Because he could not bring any accusation against his rank. He's an archangel. Lucifer is also an archangel. So even though they are both archangels, Michael could not rebuke Lucifer unless he has received a certain authority from God. Then why can we have authority over Lucifer? Because we were made in the image and the likeness of God. So we have a form that Lucifer and Michael does not have. So we operate in a certain pattern, a certain format that these angels don't have. I don't know whether you are getting me so far. 
Am I, am I clear here? So we have the ability to tell devil go away and the devil goes away. Something an angel cannot do. Acts chapter 10, you will see that Nico, um, um, Cornelius, a holy man, prays to God. He's an arms giver. He's giving. And an angel Gabriel who stands, I like what the angel said. He said, I'm the one that stands in the presence of God. He stands in the presence of God. Comes to him and say, ah, your prayer has been heard. Your breakthrough is ready. But the truth is that I can't help you. Go to a particular house. Go and look for a man by name Peter. And go to him and let him come and show you what you should do. Wait a minute. It means that there are things that a man can show you that an angel cannot show you. So I'm, I'm trying to give a balance here because sometimes people also want to just spend time with God in court and they don't want to listen to anybody. They don't want to listen to anything. I am going to God and this is what God says I should do. There are certain things that God will never do. Acts chapter 9, when um, Paul or Saul met God, the same thing, or met Jesus, he was told that go and you'll be told, when he asked the question, what should I do? Jesus didn't tell, well, at this level, Jesus is a spirit. He's, yes, he's human, but he doesn't have the lot of jurisprudence on earth because it takes a certain thing to live on this earth. So Jesus met him in Acts chapter 9 and said, go, there's a man, he doesn't like you. His name is Ananias, but I'm going to convince him to come and he will show you what you have to do. So, in breaking certain demonic patterns that fight you, number one, you need to learn to spend quality time with God, and you need to also know the people that have been assigned to you. And you need to understand number three, because sometimes in breaking the demonic pattern, we end up breaking a righteous pattern. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you, see, you can break a demonic pattern and say I'm not free from the demonic powers of darkness you are free, thank God but you can also become come to the body of Christ and break a righteous pattern which will cost you so Moses sees the uh, how do we call it um, the, the rock instead of speaking to the rock he strikes the rock God said mm -mm -mm. you are my prophet you are a God but at this stage, you can't continue. You die. Moses, God, what did I do wrong? The pattern I showed you, that tabernacle is called. Actually, if you look at how the tabernacle, they arranged it, it looks like the cross. It looks like the cross. And I've told you that Christ is the rock. My son, his side will pierce once. How come you pierce it twice? When his side is pierced once with a spear, the next thing we will do is that we will ask him, let your side that was pierced be a blessing to us. You don't have to strike my son twice. How do you break the pattern? So God said, you not get the promised land. Now then the question is, have you entered the kingdom and broken demonic pattern and yet destroying righteous patterns because you didn't know the will of God? I read a story this morning in my devotion and actually my phone was reading for me with an earpiece and I nearly cried here is a man by name no sometimes we pray here is a man by name Hezekiah second Kings 20 and Hezekiah is told by a prophet that put your house in order you are going to die how many know that story wonderful and we all preach it then he went to God and said, God, remember my good. God, remember my this. God, remember my dad. And before the prophet will leave, the God said, I've changed my mind. Now, anytime God changes his mind, you have moved him from the perfect will to a good or acceptable will. Because there is no mistake with God. So if you are going to pray to change God's mind, you are in trouble. <laughs> so you change God's mind. And God said, okay, I've added 50 more years. And he was so smart at King. He said, what is the sign that I'm going to live 15 years? 
The prophet showed him, take fig leaves and put it. The sun will move this way. This degrees, he said, thank you. He was living. When he was 12 years into his reign, 12 years, he's still in 2 Kings chapter 20. A king visited him. And he went round 12 years after he was supposed to live 15 years. He went round and showed the king, this friend king, his palaces, his room, his bedroom, his dresses, his wives, all his properties. So Isaiah came to him and said, King, I salute you. When this your friend came, what did you do to him? Did you show him everything? You asked? Oh, he was free. I showed him everything. Then the, king, the prophet said, you know what you have done? What you showed the guy is the reason why you and your family will go into captivity. Because the person is going to start envy. Sometimes, you see, you don't know that being born again, being protected by God, doesn't mean also that you should be foolish. <laughs> it's not everything you own that everybody must know. Because, see, sometimes Satan doesn't have to provoke anybody. Jealousy will provoke somebody to go to Satan on your behalf. <laughs> Sometimes somebody be proposing to you, that doesn't be going to tell everybody. Keep it. Because the person who has proposed to you, others want it. A business proposal, must, these days, I don't know, you wake up in the morning, social media asks you what's on your mind. And you too, you tell the world what's on your mind. And you are wondering why you are getting all attacks. So the prophet came and said, for showing them everything. Now, sometimes people don't understand me as a man of God. I'm very particular about certain things. Because, see, I am a man who spends time with God to know God's mind. To understand the will of God for man. Many people don't spend time with God and yet they think they know. Now, Ezekiel should have spent time with God to find out that God, why do you say I should die? Because see, he's a good man, but what God was preventing was his generation getting into captivity by a mistake he would do in the 12 years to come. So God, who knows the end of a thing from the beginning, saw that he will show his enemies something that will put his generation in captivity. But if you had gone spending time with God, say, God, why do you think I should go through this? God will show him that this is the reason why you are going to do this. And God can still give you the 15 years because you will correct the evil pattern that is about to occur in your life tomorrow. <laughs> I was having a, um, a Bible study with my wife and we were talking. One of the most weird things in the, in the world is when you will do everything you have done and God will say, I don't know you. I mean, what I mean? I, I used to play keyboard, but you were supposed to play keyboard for five years and be a pastor. You enjoy keyboard playing. You keep playing it, so God says, yes, you did a lot of keyboard playing, but that's not my assignment for you, so I don't know you. I only know you from year one to year five. At this level, I don't know you. So he said, many will come and say, I did this in your name. I did that. Yes, yeah, you did it. You got results. But is that what God wants you to have? So let's go on. Romans chapter... 12, 2. Let's read. Don't copy the behavior and customs of... The word customs is simply saying the patterns. You don't bring the patterns of the world into the things of God. Yes, I was going home and I got angry because they, I saw them taking a brush that is used in um, cleaning the auditorium to my office. And I go angry. I said, oh, but they, they are all the house of God. You don't understand things. Even in your home, you don't use the broom you, you used to sweep outside in your bedroom. Is it true or it's not true? <laughs> it is normal. You don't even use a broom you sweep in your outside 
to your, the, your, your, your bedroom. You don't even use it. Because you do, even though you don't understand it, it's very spiritual. There are things people can drop in a, on a um, gen, general compound that they can't drop in a private compound. So what a broom sweep in the market sweeps a lot of evil. And when you use it to sweep an internal place, it can transmit that evil to the new place. It makes it common. I think you are not here with me. So let's read. Do not what copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform. And listen, this is the, 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 the other way. Say, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, let God transform your mind. You see, your mind is the uh, how do you, the neutral that supports the proton or the electron. To produce what you want. So, whether it is negative or positive, your mind is the center of the seed. The, the mind is the central wheel of your life. So, whoever has your mind controls your life. If your flesh has your mind, your flesh controls your life. If your spirit has your mind, your spirit your, your, your controls your life. So, if you give it 50-50, then both are in control. Am I teaching so far? Yes. He said that do not copy the behavior of the patterns of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Getting married is good, true or false. But who to marry is another question. Because you don't marry by good. The person accepted number two, then you are you are moving. From, it is the person, the perfect will of God. James one seventeen, all good and perfect, not just good, comes from God. All of it is from God, but the good can bring you trouble. The acceptable reduces trouble. The perfect brings no trouble. <laughs> to change God's mind. Was it good? It was good. But was it acceptable and perfect? No. And how do we know? The consequences. And when he died, his son, who was 12 years, that means he gave birth maybe to this son called Manasseh um, when he was um, three years into his 15 year more life. Became king. And the guy was worse. He was the one that even provoked God further to accelerate Nebuchadnezzar is coming. <laughs> so maybe God also foresaw that you will give birth to something that will destroy your generation faster than what it is. So Ochilo, move. But we say, I have prayed and I have changed God's mind concerning this. You change God's mind. God's mind can only be changed on a mountain. Where you are spending time alone with him. Not in a haste. Am I teaching something here? So the fact that maybe, let me give an example. Maybe, let me give an example. Someone might say, look at you. You've preached for all these years. You don't have a lot of congregation. Maybe that is what is acceptable or perfect for God for me. Sometimes, let me tell you, you can be, maybe God can say you are an, let me use the word, you are supposed to be an associate pastor. But you realize that when you became a general overseer, you are pulling crowds. The fact that you are pulling crowds, that doesn't mean that you are in the will of God. That's the funny thing about God. The fact that people are getting healed, getting delivered. So at the end of the day, one of the things you should ask yourself is that, is it result you want or reward? Now, let me give an example. Yesterday, my team played Chelsea. They played all the ball. <laughs> 65%. Leicester, 35%. Shot on target. Leicester, one. One was a goal. All the shot on target. Chelsea was hitting. But at the end of the day, 
Chelsea got the result. But Leicester City got the reward. Reward, got the cap. So at the end of the day, Oh, oh, be asking me, yeah. Everybody says I'm good. Everybody, is that what you are looking for? Everybody says I'm the best. Everybody says, hey, the way we play them, the way we did them, we devil them, we pass it here, we do that here. Where is the cup? <laughs> uh, we have the best coach, we have the best this, we have the. <laughs> Is, is, am, 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 am I saying that? So you are laughing at Chelsea. I'm also a Chelsea fan. Oh, yeah. But the truth is that looking at your own life, one day will God look at you and say, Well done. Good and faithful servant. Faithfulness comes because you did what He asked. It was His pattern you followed. We, we do ministry, right? And I've seen people who do ministry, and within three months, six months, they do A, B, C, and D, and their church is exploding. And some people come to me, let's do this, I say, we are not doing it. All of you started by center, and you started giving cloth, food, money. I told you, stop. You are not a philanthropist. They didn't mind me. They thought I was too kind of. All the souls you gave food and cloth for, where are they? They are not in church. They are not in church. Show me one that is in church. Because the person must be saved, then you can help the person. It is when I see that you are committed to the things of God, that means I'm going to help you. Except Jehovah is speaking to me. Because you must come to a place of realizing that every need is not your call. You are not everybody's assignment. The reason why some of you are poor is that everybody is your assignment. Me, I don't meet everybody and preach to. Because some people, they are not my assignment. They are for somebody. Some people say, God has sent me the whole world. Then we should all resign. Take over. <laughs> Even Jesus could not save the whole world. He died for the world, but could he save the whole world? Some, the same people he was saving, he said, crucify him. I'm not talking to somebody here at all. So the fact that something is working, doesn't mean that God has endorsed it. So God was specific. Make sure, Moses, that you follow the party. Somebody say the party. Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. Now, how do you deal with this party? You cannot deal with this party except you do the following. You must have a partner. Somebody say a partner. You see, the first thing God introduced to man was a marriage partner, right? Genesis 2.18. It is not good for man to be alone. I'll make for him a helper. The word helper is the same word that you can find when Jesus said, I'll make for you a comforter or a partner by the Holy Spirit. The role a wife plays in a man's life is the same role the Holy Ghost plays in a human being's life. When you are going to make certain decisions, major decisions, you pass it through your wife, what do you think, what do you do that, then finally you, the man, you make the decision, yes, the Holy Ghost is a, let's, look, let's, let's do some reading, John 15, 26. Let me ask you a question. Did God make a mistake when he told Abraham, take now your son, your only son, whom thou love, Genesis 22, and go and kill, was, Abra was um, Isaac Abraham's only son? Answer me. He had what? Another son called Ishmael. But why did God say take your only son? Because in the books of God, Ishmael was not his son. It was not his will. It was his mistake. So, you have gone your way to have a son. When God is speaking to you, he didn't say, bring all your children. No. He said, take now your son. Your, in the books of God, the only Read your Bible. Bathsheba was never referred to as David's wife. Uriah. Because the one who struck the covenant with God on the altar was not David. Abigail, Nabal's wife. Read your Bible. A lot of the time we think that, oh, the fact that it is working means it is God. 
No. So what we have done as believers is that we might have broken away from demonic parties, but we have come in and we are breaking God's pattern for our life. How do you break God's pattern? Anytime you don't follow God's will, you are breaking his will, his pattern. And you pray, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wow, brother, we boy, heaven. So, back to 6 and um, 15, 26. When I will send you the advocate, can I have um, New King James or King James? The, the Holy Spirit is called an advocate. An advocate is like a lawyer. You don't go to the lawyer and say, uh, I'll not tell you everything by going and defend me. No. You must confess, and it is illegal for the lawyer to go and say that my client is guilty. He told me, and I know. So punish him. That is not a lawyer. The lawyer will hear your case, will hear your side of the story, and present it to the judge for your good. So the Holy Spirit is like a lawyer or a helpmate. No wife should hear your story, a husband's story, and go and say, That is not a wife. You're too far, wouldn't you? That's not a wife. So let's go. And when the, have you seen Genesis 2, 18? He said, I will, the first thing that God gave human being was God. A, 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 a helper. Now, what, that, what, that, what didn't God give uh, um, Adam Holy Spirit? He already had the Holy Spirit. So he didn't need any further spirit. What he needed was a human partner. But in our case, we have a lot of partners whether they are for us or not for us, they are smiling with us. They look like they are friends. They look like they are good friends. They look like they are the best for us. But other, whether we know or not, they, we don't even know. But there is somebody called a partner or a helper that the Holy Jesus promised. I said, let's do it again. And when the helper comes, whom I will send you from the Father. Oh, can we become a choir and read? Go. Mm-hmm. He will what? Testify of me. So now let's look at another scripture. Then we can do some more reading. Um, John 16, 7. Then we go to verse 12. John 16, 7. Let's note more about this helper. Read. N- let's go together. Go. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Now, let's go. 12, because of time. 12, we are reading 12 to 14. I still have what? To say to you, but you cannot bear them. Now, Jesus was saying that, listen, even what he told the disciples face to face, if he told them right there and then, they won't get it. Now the things I'm preaching, you are lost. Because the one who will make you understand. So you go to a court, and the judge says that, and your lawyer says, Keep quiet. When we get outside, I will explain to you. Because what the lawyer, the judge is saying are legal terms, that is your brain, doesn't understand. So Jesus was saying that the things I'm telling you, sometimes I'm a pastor. I tell people things and I know that they look at me like this and they are like, and sometimes the funny thing about it is that when they look at you and they pretend they know, you didn't get me there. They they pretend they understand what it is. Why are you going to, I'm going to the hospital, why? My ear is paining me. And I tell this person, don't go to the hospital. Pray two hours for all your souls. There's somebody with an ear problem. The person goes to the hospital, they check, there's nothing wrong with the ear. Now you pray for the person, people, and before you know, the ear problem is gone. Me, I'm telling you what the spirit is revealing. You are telling me what your body is telling you. You are praying. As you are praying, your body is doing gige gige. You want to sleep with somebody. It is not you. Sometimes the souls around you, they are going to last and fornication. Arise and intercede. 
you go and do it. You satisfy your body. Now, when you satisfy your body, now all your souls, they are in line. Line after line, everybody is doing it. Everybody, you have introduced them to it because you were the entrance. And we are telling you, but you say, oh, you have been too spiritual. Well, it's been spiritual trouble. Jesus said, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot get it. When Isaiah spoke to Hezekiah, Hezekiah didn't get it. He was only looking at his selfish reason. So I'm going to die for all the good. No, God has a good motive, a better motive, a best motive for everything he's telling you. If you don't understand it, go to him. Don't use your carnal mind to interpret God. Look, if I'm Joseph, I would never like how God treated me. I tell you that you say I'll be a prime minister. Let's set off. You make me a slave. The next moment, I pray for, for breakthrough. I fasted and I pray. You make me houseboy. After being houseboy and praying, somebody is tempting me. I say I will not sleep with that person. Instead of you, God, making them dream or something so that they will save me, you allow me to go to prison. The more I pray, the more I got into trouble. If you don't know God's will for your life, you would think he's making a mistake. But the Bible said, at the end, write the vision and make it plain. Don't it tell Because at the end, it will speak and not lie. When, the only time you will know whether what you were doing was of God or not is the end. But there is, there is somebody called the Holy Spirit who can keep telling you that, listen, things might not be working. Things might not be the way you want it, but I'm telling you within you that, listen, you're on the right path. It's going to speak for your good. Yeah.